Thanks for tuning in to the Keeping It Real show. I'm your host, Lafisa Peoples. Today we have a very special guest, Miss Tanisha Moore. Welcome to the show, Tanisha. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Today we're going to be talking about deleting toxic relationships. I'm sure someone that's watching has been involved in a toxic relationship. If you don't know what to do, you'll learn before the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in. So Tanisha, let's talk about learning the difference between a healthy relationship versus a toxic one. Well, first of all, let's start with, um, for you to even know the difference, you have to know yourself. Uh, a toxic relationship, you have to have a healthy relationship to know what toxic is. And sometimes you have to have a toxic relationship to know what healthy is. And I'm saying all of that to say that when you're in a toxic relationship, it's all about how that relationship makes you feel. You know, if you're the relationship, whether it be with uh, a child of yours, a parent of yours, a spouse, a significant other, uh, even people that you meet every day on your job, you have to be able to say how you feel that. It's all about the emotion that that person gives to you and the emotion that you feel from it. And if it's toxic, that means that it's causing you, you know, uh, discouragement after discouragement, and it's making you feel a certain way. When did you first realize that you were involved in a toxic relationship? Man, it, that's a, it really took a while. It took a while because when sometimes you don't know that you're in a toxic relationship. You know, you're not aware of what of the signs of a toxic relationship until after you're so deep inside of it that you it's really taking a lot to get out of it. How would you define toxic relationship? Toxic means poisonous. Um, it means harmful. It's a negative effect on your life and on your emotional and mental state. When you realize that you were going through a toxic relationship, what is one of the first things that you did? You know, for a long time, it had to be admit, admitting that I was in a toxic relationship. You first have to, you know, admit it first and recognize that that's what you're in. That's the very first step. And secondly, it's pretty much you have to decide on what you want in your life and what you want for your future. What made you decide that toxic relationships is not what you want to be involved with? Because I strive for excellence. And that does not include something that's going to poison my life and my purpose for my future. When we were reading your, uh, what you said into the show about coming on, we were reading and understood that you even had to let go of some people in your family that were toxic. Yes. How did that make you feel, knowing that this is family by blood, but I gotta let you know? You know, those, those actions that you do, see, I didn't feel, some people would say, oh, that hurt me, up. it did. Because what I wanted in my future would meant more to me than what I had right then. My family is my family, it will always be. And if they need me, I will be there. But that doesn't mean that I have to include you in this you know, certain circle around me. I had to keep the negativity out so that God could be able to promote me. Was it hard letting go of the family? It wasn't hard because I didn't totally let go of the family, of the blood. I let go of the negativity that it brought to my life. Once you let it go, did you have a sense of peace? Oh, very much so. Oh, very much so. I surely did. It was almost like, you know, a brand new day. Were you finding that you were stressed and tense, that it was starting to be a, have an effect on you? Exactly. And that's how I knew that it was toxic. Wow. Once you realize, okay, this is family, but I got to let you go, I got to keep moving forward, what then did you do? Um, I distanced myself uh, a certain type, kind of way. Uh, you know, other people are also have a discernment about being excluded or feeling in a certain type of way, but I did it out of love. You know, I, I didn't banish anyone, but I just went about my business as usual. Did your family feel like you disowned them? No. They, well, 
you would have to actually ask that person about that, but I always uh, kept in touch as far as let them know that I love you, I'm here, and I will always be family. But I gotta keep on. Exactly. So now let's talk about, because you were also in a toxic marriage. Oh, yes. When did you realize that it was toxic? Well, I realized I was in a toxic marriage from the very beginning. And I wanted up in a toxic marriage because I was not being honest with myself. When you say you wasn't being honest with yourself, that means you were seeing signs and you were denying them? Exactly. I knew, I, I did not listen to my inner self. I didn't listen to my own discernment. And I talked myself out of the things that I was saying, the things that I knew. So I wound up in a toxic marriage and I had to just, I had to get out. I had to get out. Were there children involved? Well, not in that marriage, no. Not in that marriage, you know, uh, it didn't result in children at the end. Once you, how long did you stay in that marriage? Two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. What made you get up and say, I can't do this anymore? Me knowing my worth. When you say knowing your worth, give us an example of what you mean. Because of all the things that I had learned, you know how you would be like, you grow up, you grow, you mature, and all the things that you learn. And by the time I got to this marriage, I had already learned certain things. And I just looked in the mirror one day and told myself, you know what, this is not for you. And you have to get out. You know, if you, you have, I thought more about myself and what I needed to do, because I still had family to take care of. Once you realized this is not working, how soon did you leave? Well, it did take a, a little while. Um, of course, circumstances had to transpire in order for me to make a move out. But at first, I had to make up my mind. I had to make up my, had a made up mind, and then start my plan from there. So when you had a made up mind, was it God that gave you the strength to leave, or was it that you said, Cause you seem like you're real sassy. Yeah. You, know, you seem like, honey, don't tell me because I'll tell you. Pretty much that's how I was. Yeah. Pretty much that's how I was. I just, you know, I just told myself, and sometimes I'm, I'm a very, I have a very strong personality. So I have to be very strong with myself. And when I get my, my spiritual intuitions, they are very strong and concerned with me. So I strongly told myself, you know what? This is not for you. And this is, you have to get out of this. And you have to make these moves and you have to make them now. And that's what I did. How did your spouse feel when you said I'm leaving? You know, by that time, I, I'm not sure exactly, you know, what he felt inside, the true him. But on the outside, it almost was amicable. When you left, did you go into another toxic relationship? No, not immediately, no. But eventually you did? Yeah, but it wasn't with another man. So once you went into another relationship and you realized this is toxic, what did you do? Uh, I pretty much saw the signs a lot sooner. So when you saw the signs, were you able to let it go instantaneously? Yes, it got quicker and easier to let go of toxic relationships. You see the signs, you know what you're getting involved with, and what happens is you actually stop yourself from going into another toxic relationship. You're more discerning about a, a, a person or another interaction with somebody else than you were before. So now, because I'm, you know, I've grown a little bit, I've matured a little bit, I take everything that I've learned and I apply that to what I'm doing in my life. What have you learned? Oh man, I've learned so much. First of all, you have to know your worth and how to correctly use your power. That's something. What power do we as women have? Oh man, we have the power to change everything with our thoughts, with our, you know, with our minds, and with our actions. You know, we can change the outcome of everything that's going on in our life. Do you think is that we as women don't use the power that we possess? No, we don't. We do not use the power that we possess. And sadly, a lot of women, especially young women, are not even aware of the power that they have. What do you think it is of a woman that they don't realize the power that they possess? Well, actually, I think it starts with birth. And some were not raised with it. And really, you have to be exposed to it and to, you know, acknowledge that this is my power. It's mine, and nobody's taking it. 
who and what exposed you to? Because you seem like, honey, I'm this powerful woman, and I know who I am. So you're not going to stop. That's right. That's right. Circumstances of life. That really uh, took me from this point to that point to that point to that point. And when you are searching and when you are looking inside, and you know you have to look at when things are not going right. And a person that really wants something out of life, out of life is going to sit back and be like, what is the problem? You know, what is it that's bothering me? Why is it that this is happening to me over and over and over? And so when you start to search for yourself and search inside, I say, meet yourself again. When you need to meet yourself again, you start to look at things like, you know what? This is toxic here. This is toxic there. And you start making changes. And once you start making those changes, you start realizing that this is where the problem was. But I can do this. You have to tell yourself, I'm a queen. You got to tell yourself, I am love. I can do anything. I'm strong. And nobody's going to take that. When I tell you, you have this attitude, right. this attitude and this aura like, I'm going to be somebody. I am somebody. I don't care what you say. If I need to delete you and eliminate you, I'll do just that. With no problem. Did the attitude come from your mom? No, no. I think I was born with it. Uh, it actually, in the beginning parts of my life, it actually kept me in trouble. And it's not arrogance. And it's when not say confidence. It's not arrogance, what is it? It's confidence. It's just confidence. And it's what I know that's in me, what I know I can do, what I can achieve through my spiritual guidance. I just know it. There's no stopping you. Not at all. Not at all. If it was a stop sign, I don't believe you would stop. No, I've got plenty of tickets for it. Yeah, but when I say stop sign, I mean, if someone told you to stop, you are like, honey, I'm not going to stop you. I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on moving whether I get a ticket or not. I'm going to keep on moving with my life. I'm going to keep on moving with my spirituality. I'm going to keep on moving with my purpose. I'm going to keep on moving with my family to uplift us and for black women. I heard that you empower other women. Mm -hmm. What do you do in terms of empowering them? Really, I just try to motivate them. I try to get them to see what I see. I try, you know, my vision is so far, and it seems like they only vision up to this point. But I want them to go forward uh, into the world, so I just try to motivate them. So is it that you're showing these women that there's no limitations? Not at all. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. You, know, you can go as far as your mind can take you. You know, when I think about the power that we as women have, mm -hmm. and I think about there are some women that know how to use it, and there are some that don't. Mm -hmm. What would you say to encourage a woman that has low self-esteem, that does not realize there is power in her? What would you say to her? I would just say to her that you are beautiful. First of all, they need to know that they are beautiful. They don't need anyone to tell them. They need to look in the mirror and see how beautiful they are, how beautiful their features are, how beautiful their purpose is, their future is, how bright it is, first of all. But to get there, you have to put some work behind it. When you say put work behind it, elaborate for me. There, is, there are things that we have to do. See, everybody wants something to land on their doorstep. You know, we want a quick fast and then the heart. That's why we, they want it right. They want to open the door and they go to the future. They go to the, the husband that they want. They go to the, the job and the career they want. They, no, you have to work for it. You have to be willing to put the work in. You have to be willing. Some people, you have to be willing to even fail at something. You have to, so you can get back up again. Have you ever failed at something? Yes, I have, but you know what? I don't call it a failure. I call it learning experiences. So how did you get through your learning experience? By getting back up. You didn't stay down? No. You didn't but, stay down. Mm -mm. I didn't give up. I won't stay down. You get back up, and you do it again. And you learn from when you fail. You learn how to fall. In your learning process, was it painful? Yes, it was painful. It was painful, but it's less painful now because I more readily receive correction in my life. Wow. When you think about pain and you think about struggles, nobody wants to go through it. No, they don't. If we can delete that in life and just live this happy life, we would. Mm -hmm. What is it about your struggles that have helped you get from point A to point B? It is the emotion behind the struggle. When you struggle, there is an emotion that has taught you. And when you have been taught with emotion, 
when you go forward, you don't want to feel that emotion again. You don't want to feel that pain, that sadness, that regret. You don't want to feel those things again. So that encourages you and motivates you to do things a different way and to be more, you know, readily able to listen and to go inside of yourself to see what's right. Do you regret any of what you've been through? You know, I that look at I used to. But looking back on it, on it, I see now that it was all for my good. When you say for your good, because I know there's scripture mm -hmm. that say everything, all things, mm -hmm. shall work everything. together for all right. Yes. How did it work out for your good? Because if those things had not have happened to me, I would not be where I am today. I would not have learned the lessons that I've learned. I would not have met the people that I have met. I would not have been able to accomplish the things that I've been able to accomplish. I have a wonderful life. Even though things are not perfect, I still have And they're not perfect with any of us. That, you know, exactly. a lot of people come for size and say, all exactly. my life is perfect. I don't care if you're the richest person out there. Exactly. exactly. Everybody still has problems. Yes, they do. What one lesson that you had to go through prepared you for your today? Oh, man. Really? It's, the lesson was with me. My lesson was how to first be a person, a servant. You know, it had to be, I had to be a little bit submissive. And my lesson was to first be a servant, to learn how to be a servant to everybody else. When you learn how to be a servant, what did it teach you? It really taught me about giving, about how not to be so selfish, about how to be uh, not be so judgmental, about how to be more accepting to other people. Wow. You know, when you think about what the Bible says, God blesses a cheerful giver. Amen. I understand that you give a lot to women that come into your business mm -hmm. and you are actually helping them to get from point A to point B. Explain to us how you're a giver. You know, I, I give a lot of, I, I feel like it's pieces of my life. I give a lot of my experiences as testimony. Um, I give a lot of encouragement, motivation, and you know, people come into my business and everybody's not always on the right level. You know, people come in with a lot of weight on their shoulders. And what I try to give them is a hope. A hope that you can hold on. You are a wonderful, beautiful person. You can hold on, hold on to yourself. Did you have anyone pushing you, telling you you can hold on? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I sure did. All around me. All around me. Do you think that that's important? Yes. To have healthy relationships around you to push you into your And life? that's what propels you forward. A healthy relationship. Healthy relationships is going to add positivity to your life, support. Um, you can go to those people or they will come to you, they will feel you in me and come to you and give you an encouraging word where you was about to give up, but you don't because it sticks in your head that this person can believe in me and I can't believe in myself. It's a problem. Here. Something's wrong. That's right. Wow. Once you realize who you were and God, who you are, did you then turn around and say, I'm unstoppable, nothing is going to ever stop me from getting where I want to go? You know, uh, I do, but we all get to that place where we get a little discouraged. And I have to remind myself of that daily. It is a daily struggle, and um, I am still learning myself. I think I will probably never just know every little bitty thing about me because things are constantly evolving and changing as I learn and grow. Since you know how to recognize mm -hmm. a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. do you distance yourself immediately when you say, uh -uh, this is toxic, I'm not going to this? Or do you kind of exit with compassion? Well, me, I'm more of an immediate type of person. Um, I pretty much consult the spirit on that. Uh, because you never know. You, something may appear toxic to you. You don't know how you're being used. So I consult the spirit on that to make sure, are you, what do you want me to do? Um, is this something that you send it to me? How do you want me to proceed further? And that's how I go. Have there ever been a time when you knew it was a toxic relationship or a friendship and God said, stay there and help? Yes, there have been times. Were you obedient? Not always. And I, 
I really you learn from your disobedience that this is what this is what my purpose was in this situation. And I should have done A, B, and C. But because I was so disobedient, it turned out like this, which results in other learning experiences, which I've had plenty of. Do you think that toxic people or toxic relationships is what people should be involved in? Definitely not. No. How do they recognize the difference between toxic and healthy? Because we know you understood because you have a spirit of discernment. What about someone that doesn't understand the spirit and doesn't understand how to recognize it? What's the sign that will show them, uh-uh, stay back, mm -hmm. or yes, proceed? Um, if you're in a toxic relationship, you will be sad more than you're happy. Um, you will be down more than you're up. Everything that you try to do, that person or that situation will stunt it. You won't be able to go forward because of this person or this situation. You won't be able to uh, propel. You won't be. You can't even get up and go about your day without thinking that this person is going to be a problem. That's a one sign of a toxic relationship. When there are many signs. Signs are always there. Mm -hmm. I think it's we as the people that ignore the signs. Exactly. You know, we say, oh, I see the red light, but I'm going to keep going back. Uh -huh. And I think it's because of the greed of man. We want to appease flesh. Mm -hmm. How do you control your flesh? You know, it is not an easy thing always, but I really just want, it's, 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 it's in my pleasing that I want to please God. That's what really helps me to control the flesh. Because, and another thing, is because I have gotten tired of paying for my consequences. I, I'm tired of consequences. So I would rather have perfect will and do what's right than have to pay for the things that I'm doing that's wrong. So in other words, perfect will is what you want. That's right. Not permissible. Exactly. I hear people say it so much. They say, oh, well, God give you, you know, free will. Do you believe in that? Well, I think that God gives, God gives us choices. He definitely gives us choices. And by those choices, um, we determine the outcome of our lives. Everything is a choice. He's not making us do anything. Even though, at the end of the day, His will will be done. But He gives us choices. And I freely choose to follow them. Do you believe that God's choice is the best? Oh, of course. There's nothing, there is nothing better or greater than what God has for us. Do you think that viewers that are watching today are trying to understand the difference between doing what they want to do versus the difference of saying, I'm going to do it God's way? Oh, definitely. There's a, a big difference between that. Um, that's because a lot of times we're thinking within our flesh. We are thinking worldly. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His They're ways not are not. Exactly. His ways are not our ways. So we have to take off the worldly eyes and put on our spiritual eyes and determine what is more cleansing for our souls, what's more cleansing for our spirit, for our futures. So, um, yeah, there's a big difference between that. Are you glad that you've let go of those toxic relationships? Yes, definitely. How free do you feel? I feel like I'm exhaling. I am exhaling in my life right now, and I am gaining more positive relationships in my life, the relationships that will help me to propel forward by encouragement, by support. I mean, when you have positive relationships, you have a support system. You have somebody that you can lean on, someone who can keep you within fellowship with God. Wow. What message would you like to convey to our viewers today about letting go? of toxic relationships, but grabbing hold to help you with. You know, I would like to say that first of all, know your worth. Know what you're worth inside, know what you're worth to God, and know what you're worth to those that come after you. If you have children or people that's dependent on you, know your worth. And secondly, know your power. Once you know those two things, it will not be hard to let go of toxic relationships. Trust God. Consult him in everything you do. I know you're watching and you're trying to figure out, God, how do I begin the process? We're going to pray with you today so that God will give you strength 
to let go of the unhealthy, toxic relationship. If you just stretch your hand towards your television and just say these words, Father God, I believe you, I receive you, and I am letting go that which is unhealthy in my life. I take on the spirit of God. I release myself from pain, from agony, from strife, from malice, from anything that is not your will. Father God, I submit to your will. I let go of things and people that you don't want me to have, that you don't want me to be attached to. Father God, I pray that you will enter into my heart, that you will enter into my place of where I live, and that you will rest, rule, and abide this day and forevermore in our life. If you're watching and you're not saved, but you have a desire to be saved, we're going to pray for you. If you accept God as your Savior, say it. I accept you, Lord, as my Savior. You died for me that I will be free that I might live again. Yes. And guess what? You're free. Yes. You're safe. Yes. Just like that. You don't have to run around the house. You don't have to go into a place and say, oh Lord, you don't have to go sit behind and talk to a priest. Yes. You know what? You ask him right where you're at. Whether you're at work, at home, at a friend's house, at a loved one, wherever you're at. When you prayed that prayer, you were forgiven of your sins. Yes. And guess what? You're free. Yes. You're free to live. Stop existing. Stop holding on to that which don't need to be held on to. Because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. It's been a pleasure servicing you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Would you come back on our show again? Absolutely. When you come back, we're going to talk to you about how you now hold on yes. to what God has given you. Yes. Thank you for being our special guest. Me. Thank you. Everybody stay tuned for more to come. Stay blessed. Thank you.